and welcome to Foresight. I'm your host, Ken Weaver. With me today is Mark Steele. Mark has been around for a while. He's been uh, in, in business for, for some for last 12 years of his own working. But he was here as well, working with us here at SATV. And he also worked at GBH. And today we're going to be discussing what that was all like and getting into what he's going to, what he proposes to do here at SATV. Mark, welcome to SATV. Thank Hi, you Ken. very much for coming. Sure, thanks, nice I'm, to be back. After knowing you for so long, as I finally got you in front of the camera. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Yep. So in that time, um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. What, where, where Are you from Salem? Are you a Salem? No, I grew up in um, upstate New York, a town that a lot of people seem to, a little small town that a lot of people seem to know, Saugerties, New York. It's uh, proximity to Woodstock was significant, but it, it's uh, significant on its own right now. So I grew up uh, in that Catskill area up there in upstate New York. Okay. Yeah. I'm originally from Albany. Oh, you are? So, so you was, know Sorgates. And I was at Woodstock. See, you know Sorgates. <laughs> I was too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, from, so how did you find yourself over to Massachusetts? Was, was it straight to, right to Boston area or to the North Shore? Or how did you well, get the Boston area, when I first moved here, I moved to Canton. But um, I was just looking for stuff to do. Mm -hmm. you know, in upstate New York. And, and the job prospects weren't fantastic. I was uh, out of the Navy. I was 29 years old. Oh. And uh, I was seeing some limitations into staying in mm -hmm. upstate mm -hmm. New York. So my sister lived in Boston. And um, she knew a guy who was in industrial real estate. He did oh, real oh, big, yeah. big, big shopping centers, stuff sure. like that. And he was looking for somebody to make videos for him. Ah. So that's what drew so me that, here. That's I what so I came. Oh. I came here to work for him mm -hmm. for a short time. It was really good, but it was it didn't last a long time, and uh, and that's what brought me to Boston. Right. And was my you know I had dabbled in video before that. Is this VHS time? Or VHS, this sure, oh, VHS, okay. yeah. Sure. And um, but that's what got me going seriously in in right. video. Right. But uh, in nineteen back at back in New York back in when I lived in a place called Stone Ridge. Uh, I took out a loan for 1200 bucks, 1979, which seemed like a, a lot of money at that time. <laughs> it was. And um, I bought a camera mm -hmm. and a portable VHS deck. And I was one of the first, uh, you know, maybe not the first, but one of them. Everyone was like, wow, he's got, you know, and I shot everything. Mm -hmm. I shot all kinds of stuff. And I loved it. You know, I just yeah. loved the technology. And, and then I borrowed someone else's VHS deck. So I had two of them, so I could edit, do oh, rough nice. edits yeah. and stuff, and sure. it was crude, but but uh, mm -hmm. that was really my start. And then so that that's what got you out there to uh, to be with people and to to deal with them in front of the camera, right? So yes, well, a, a lot of you know, I had friends who were in the in bands, you know, in the music business. Sure. So it's, that's been a theme for me until today, you know, or <laughs> up until continuing through today. Right. Is uh, is uh, making videos of music of people sure. perform but that's not all i did but but that's uh that's my 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 love is, so is were there any pop, pop bands or that that we would perhaps no probably uh, not or? probably not bands you would know they were local bands okay. and you know uh, from my, the area of where from from, from the upstate new york of poughkeepsie oh uh you know woodstock uh, yeah. you know that area uh -huh. so so, uh, so but, but not great bands there. Yeah, but I was at a you know it was early oh, okay. on, and I, oh, okay. I I wasn't in with the top bands, you know. Okay. <laughs> I did work for a time at uh, Bearsville Studios, but uh, I was mm -hmm. a technician. I wasn't a engineer or anything like that. Right, I, right. I repaired their amplifiers and yeah. was in. The, so so you're getting a really ground ground start and and learning how the the business up. Yeah, you just know. a, a so, yeah a toe a toe in the business there, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, but but when I moved to Boston area when I moved to this area, greater Boston area, was when I seriously got in, into video. Right. And, uh, and um, you know, doing the real estate videos was, was good. It was like, you know, even to this day, when I work and I do more uh, corporate style videos, mm -hmm. uh, they're not necessarily interesting to people outside of that specific group. Sure. But sure. to me, as in the production, I love the production end of it. I love the microphones, the lights, the cameras, right, the right. setting things up, the aesthetic sure. of how you set up a shot, the the <laughs> pro, you know the technology. It's a it's a nice combination of technology 
and aesthetics. Right. You yes. know, it's yes. a balance sure, of, sure. Of, of things. You have to get all your technology right. You got to mm -hmm. lay the groundwork, get your camera set up right, your microphone levels, all, that kind of stuff, all the tech, before you can start making things look pretty, you right. know? Right, right. And uh, so that's what I like. I really like that. You know, I like that, that aspect of it, that mm -hmm. balance, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so Boston area, you hit when? What years were you? Good question. Uh, I, I would say 1982. Ah. 1982, I think. Maybe 83. Okay. Uh, right. But uh, and um, so you went where for, for? You're still doing the industrial. Well, at that time I was I was like I said I was hired by that man who had uh, industrial real estate right. holdings and right. he was he was building things and acquiring. Mm -hmm. So you know he had his needs for videos. But but then eventually that didn't work out for him. But um, I worked for a local production company called Multivision, who was no longer in business. Right. But uh, I went from working for the industrial real estate guy mm -hmm. to Multivision. And it was funny because I remember I was literally, I knew that the one job was coming to an end. Right. And right, I right. went in the yellow pages mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm. phone book, if we remember what that is. Oh, and yeah. I went to video production companies, and I went down, sure. and I was calling, 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 calling. And, you know, you would get a secretary, or you would get somebody who was a job was to answer the phones. You right. would get nowhere, right? Right, right. But um, when I dialed Multivision, mm -hmm. I got the owner. He picked up the phone. <laughs> Donald awesome. O'Sullivan. And uh, he's a great guy. And, and they said, oh, that sounds interesting. I had a, the Navy background where I was sure. in electronics. Right. I had a, a little bit of experience in video, mm -hmm. shooting, editing. I had uh, taken a course in editing at Boston Film and Video Foundation, BFVF. BFVF. I don't know if people you remember that. I don't yeah. even know if it's still in no, existence. No, I, I don't know if it's still in existence, but I remember. It. I remember hearing about but it. But I, you know, always had been doing stuff like that. So I ended up uh, with an interview at Multivision, mm -hmm. and I went in, and I was like, "This is where I want to work." Right. This is like right. so cool. Right. They had uh, one inch tape machines, real open reel, one inch oh. tape machines, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, broadcast quality, three quarter inch at that time. It was, right. Uh, right. you know, 16. they had beautiful suites, you know, that were, were designed, you know, by a, built by a shipbuilder. So all the wood was nice and all, it was gorgeous with glass nice. windows and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, oh man, this is where I want to work. And in fact, they hired me and I worked there for. Two and a half years, I think. Mm -hmm. And I learned CMX editing. I don't know, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, mean, I could get deep okay. into, yeah. into you can, you technology, can be, you can technical be things. Technolo yeah, so technical. in the early days of editing, computer aided editing, right. CMX was the, the, the main, the main, yeah. main. there were other right. ones, but CMX was the, uh, mm -hmm. the primary um, computer aided editing. And at that time, the computer in the edit room was the only computer in the whole business. And who made the computer? Uh, it was made by Digital Equipment Corporation. Oh, okay. DEC. Right, right. right. And uh, we had, oh, it was like, I could go, you know, we had things called intelligence interfaces, IIs, I squareds. Right. We had uh, sync generators. We had the, all, oh, it was like the technology was really quite complex at yeah. that time. And uh, to learn the computer, to learn the, the technology of everything had to have a sync, a sync generated, you know, black burst and sync, and yep. so, and the the one inches were one type of of uh, of uh, had color framing issues and stuff like that, and the, the, it was a ton of stuff to learn. Just a, and I was inundated with it, but I loved it, and I it, it took me a long time, and and um, you know, I remember my first edit alone, you know, with a client, oh, alone okay. in the room right. with a client. Right, right. And uh, How was your it was like, uh, I don't know what they charged, it was like 300 bucks an hour or something, and the pressure was on, right. and it was very, very stressful. And, and um, you know, we had to learn to deal with the stress. Sure. So you had, you had the technology, you had the stress, you had the client, you had the, you know, all that stuff. And it was uh, quite a experience. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was good, and I, I learned quite a bit there, and I thought that I learned a lot. I did learn a lot, but I thought I got this, right? You know? And then um, technology change. I went to WGBH ah. after two and a half years, yeah, yeah. and uh, I decided uh, um, that I would, I would 
apply there, and sure enough, they needed somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I was pretty burned out by the schedule at Multivision. Right, right. And um, when I look back on it now, it was funny, because GBH is kind of like, kind of a straight-laced place, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was not a straight-laced looking guy, you know. Right, right. I had uh, cowboy boots and jeans and long hair and a leather jacket and stuff, and I was like, like I was like totally like, pretty much fried and, and I, I went in for the interview and I was, like, oh, I was like oh man you know and they at the end of the interview they didn't even wait right they said when can you start wow and I was like uh, maybe how's next Wednesday so, you walk, so you're walking with a resume and, and well no I had applied they called oh. me I had oh, I had applied right. okay. and and uh, they called me to come in <laughs> and but that was my first right. introduction right. to it you know sure, sure. and um so I spent 24 years there. It was great. I worked on. I worked on. Um, you know, it was. It was. It was. Uh, so what were some of the highlights cool. of, of of doing all that and working? In, well, I in worked on Frontline when it was new. I didn't work on oh, really? the first. You know, Frontline was already established for a couple of years when I started there in '86. Right. But um, I worked on almost all the front lines for about about 12, 14 years or something. And I did online. I did. I uh -huh. did the online process, which is a very specific part of the editing. In those days, you would do what was called offline. So the producer would sit with an offline editor, and they would edit three-quarter inch tape back and forth with burned in time code, which some of you may know what that is. And, and, and then they would fine tune their show yeah. as best as possible in that kind of crude editing. And then they would bring a handwritten list of time code to me in the online room. And then I would work with an audio engineer and a, a Chiron operator, a character generator, Chiron operator. The producer would sit in the room. Usually there was an assistant editor or an editor in the room, you know, the offline editor. And so it was a whole group of people in this room that looked like a cockpit to a 747 or something, you know. <laughs> and out there behind the glass windows were four open reel one inch tape machines. A, a rack with three three-quarter inch machines in it. Right, right. I had a big switcher, all this stuff. It was, you know, it was quite intimidating. And um, so I was the final step in the process before the show went on air. So you were the finished guy. Yeah, so typically a producer would work with an offline editor for anywhere from a couple of months on a short show, you know, short, mm -hmm, short mm -hmm. turnaround, to a couple of years, a year, year and a half, on putting their show together. They would bring it to me and in those days, it would take about a week to put it together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we would sit with the client for about a week, putting together a one-hour show, and I would do basic color. I didn't have sophisticated color correction, but we had time-based color correction. Okay. You know, TBC. Okay. Yep. And time-based corrector, yep. and it had it had hue and and saturation and video levels and stuff right. built into it. And so we would do that type of color correction, and. Uh, Get the show looking as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. The audio levels correct. All the PBS had very strict technical specifications with video levels, black levels, white levels, chroma, audio peaks, stuff like that. Now, is that normal in the industry? Or yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. All the all broadcast, the especially especially in the analog days, right, uh, right. there were because the if the video got too hot, if the chroma and the video got too hot. It would actually burn, it, bleed into the audio, right? You know, oh, because they're oh, sure. yeah, because they're all, all on, the on their own line. frequencies, yeah, right. and you know, so if, if chroma got too hot, you'd hear a in the audio, wow. you know, and so you, so you had to have all your stuff like just right, that and cool. and then the show had to look good too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't just oh, well, we're gonna, you know, yeah. it had to look good, you sure. know, yeah. and then you had to match all the flesh tones and make sure that the video mm -hmm. levels, you know, Seems which which right. we still do today, but but um, yep. but back then it was it was a bit of a you know, it was a, it was a thing. So anyway, so, so GBH, I, I can't, you know, I worked on Nova, Frontline, American Experience. I did the first American Experience. I did the first Antiques Roadshow. I worked on this old house and Victory Garden. And um, I'm leaving out a lot of stuff, but, but you yeah, know, 50, yeah, all, all the shows that years, yeah. GBH well, did, I would have a handle on them, you know, in the end, at you one know, point or another. Yeah. yeah, before they hit air. Yeah, there were other editors there too, but but uh, but but I saw almost all the shows before they hit air. So, so uh, you know, it was exciting. 
and it was the top of the industry, you know? I yeah. mean, I had, you know, you know, any given uh, week, I had like, you know, credits on five or six, you know, Different primetime shows. TV right. shows, you know? Wow. So it was nice. It was, wow. you know, it was PBS. It wasn't ABC or NBC, but yeah, still but, in all, it was, it was, yeah. it was good. And there were- I was I, watching PBS back then. I liked the shows too. It, <laughs> yeah. it certainly didn't Absolutely. hurt right, right. that I really liked Frontline. Frontline was a great show. And, it you know, Nova's. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 Nova. and Masterpiece Theater. And I leave that out. And, and yes, uh, you, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it was, it was, wow. it was a good run. It was a really awesome. good run. Wow. But, you know, time moves on. Time moves but on. during that time, yes. During, we could go, you know, but maybe yeah. we could segue into sure. SATV because that, in what, 1994, you said yep. we started here? Yes. Yep. I had thought it was a little earlier, but you know better than I do. So in 1994, we opened these, you guys, right. or somebody opened these studios yep. here. And I was like, wow, this is nice. First class. Yeah. And <laughs> I came down and I met. Julie Doherty, yeah, yeah, yes. who, who everybody here in Salem knows Julie, and and uh, yeah. we became good friends, still friends today, and we did one of the one of the many shows that were done out of this studio right here, Songwriters on the Round, right. in 1994, and I think probably you know I'm not sure, but maybe two or three years we did that show. We had 27 shows, right, and um, it was Julie's idea based on. Uh, something she had seen at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville uh -huh. to do songwriters in the round. Oh, that's and we started with um, local musicians, mm -hmm. singer-songwriters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm gonna, I can't remember them all, but Satch Karens was one, and Steve Sadler was on our band, and Woody mm -hmm. Woodward, and yes. Richie Grace, who unfortunately has passed away, and Julie were the, you know, and then we invited... Uh, David Mallet, I, I, I'm on the spot here. I can't remember Al all the Cooper people, was, but Al but Cooper was one. Al, well, and then so so we had yeah. local people, and yeah. I was like really amazed by the local talent, okay. how good oh, yeah. they are. Oh, yeah. It was just like wow, yeah. and which they, is, still yeah, they still are. Yeah, they still are. And yeah. and um, but then the we did have Al Cooper on, yeah. which was a, was was really nice. But the first. Well, we had David Mallett, who I would say, it's hard to say who's He's higher profile right, than right, one right. guy, but sure. Chris Smither was coming to town. Oh. And I, I said, I'm gonna contact him. Now, I think it might have been, we had email back then in 94, didn't we? I forget how, I, I must have. Uh, no, I, must have, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think so. I don't think I called him, but whatever it was, I contacted Chris Smither so, yeah. and I said, you know, we do a local cable access show here in Salem and you're coming to perform would you come up a little early and stop in the studio and we can we can tape a show? And he goes, sure. I'm like, wow. We you know, people should do that more often today. Yeah. You know, yeah. If they want to do something like that, get a hold of the artists who are coming in and invite them in. Yeah. So I was thrilled. Sure. Chris Smither came in. We had Chris Smither. Wow. So then based on that, we said, geez, let's try, uh, you know, Tommy Makeham. Yeah. And we got a hold of Tommy Makeham. He lived, he's also passed away, lived in New Hampshire, and he came down. So we had Tommy Makeham. It was like a big name, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, um, and then Al Cooper. We had Noel Stuckey. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was great, you know? But, but it was a lot of work for me to do the show here. Because you were producing as well as... Well, Julie and I produced it together, but I directed right. it. Right, right. And then I took the, the switched VHS yeah. tape, right. right, that we mm -hmm. recorded in there. And then my wife shot a... a uh, 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 another camera. We had three oh. or four cameras, so she shot a fourth camera. Handheld. Yeah. Handheld. She got up on the ladder and got overhead shots, oh, yeah, got right. tight shots. Yeah, I so I would bring that to WGBH and edit that together, add the titles and everything and do the audio mix. After I finished my regular day of work at WGBH, oh. I would sit in the suite and oh, do wow. songwriters and around. Doing that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's a lot it, it got a, it was a, a lot, yeah. a lot. Oh, so yeah. I was very happy to have done that, and I think that that was uh, you know. But we have a clip. No, Oddly no. enough, Wonderful. you might. I have a clip of. Uh, oh, I gotta back this up. And I have a songwriters on the round clip here, and I've, I've, you know, like I say, we had 27 shows, mm -hmm. and this clip is, um, it's uh, two minutes and 40 seconds long, and it's just a couple of, um, 
short pieces from two of the songwriters on the round shows. So let me let me play that. Right where, right where we are. Yes. Bigger room. A little bigger. The big room is a lot bigger. This is called Help Me Now. Looks pretty good. Looks great. Nobody shows me how. This is John Lincoln Wright. The memory of your tender kiss, my tender love. I was trying to write sort of a hoagie Carmichael kind of tune, and I struggled through it for years, and I couldn't get it right. I had too many words, too many pieces to it, so I get together with Larry. Uh, last year, and I said, Larry, I'm in big trouble on this. Let's see if we can figure out which lines to get rid of, which chords to throw. It was a nice collaboration. And uh, so I call it uh, Merle Haggard and Tony Bennett at Hoagie Carmichael's <laughs> house. So. That's good. <laughs> we work all our lives and forget why we do it when deep down inside we would rather be through it. Too scared to look back and admit that we blew it. I'm getting out now. Tell the coop that I flew it. And there's flies on the screen. I remember this so clearly. Really. Doing this, you know, I mean, it's like it was yesterday. Yeah. It definitely left the mark. Yeah, no, no pun intended. Yeah, so so that's uh, so that was a couple of clips from Songwriters in the Round. That was great. And um, you know, I have very fond memories of doing that. I met a lot of nice people that I still oh, yeah. am in contact with today. Oh, that's great. And um, based on that, yeah, I uh, let me let me see what my next. Uh, oh yeah, okay, Don White. Oh Don. I met yeah, I met yeah. Don White. Don White was a guest on Songwriters in the Round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Um, so he's a great guy, you know, and I, I was taken by his his music, his style, his storytelling, and, sure, his, you know, yeah. and uh, um, so I remember this because it was the first day I had my cell phone, right? Uh, first day I had my cell phone, and I said I'm going to take a walk on in Swampscott for some exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have my new cell phone with me, right? And um, so. Darned if it doesn't ring, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. and it was my friend Bill who called me and said, uh, "Mark, I got a, I got a job. We're gonna, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm gonna do a show with Ronnie Earl, and I want you to direct it and edit it and stuff." And I go, "Oh yeah, that's great, Bill. Ronnie. That's awesome. Let's do that." So I got, <laughs> I got my job on my, on my cell, cell phone, <laughs> and then I'm walking down the beach a little further. And I run into Don White, oh, and he's walking on the beach with his wife. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Don. How you doing? Oh, yeah, great. Oh, nice to see you. He goes, Mark, I have this idea. I want to do uh, uh, a 90-minute show. I want I want to record my performance mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and somehow release it, right? Sure. And it was in the early days of DVD, and I think it, it, was, it was funny because back then, Don and I have spoken about this recently, uh, during the process of doing his first show that I've done three or four with him okay. subsequently uh, DVD was like so new that it was very expensive and we're like oh I don't know I don't know if we can do DVD you know and then all of a yeah. sudden during the the couple of months we were working the prices the price on went, right down. Uh, yeah. went down to make it like very feasible that we could so I bought I bought I forget what the program was but I bought DVD making software right. 
and I learned all about that, making the chapters and everything. And, and so, um, so I've subsequently worked with Don on a number of shows over the years. And um, I have four, four concerts of his that I've done. And um, uh, so I have, I have some clips of that. If, oh, that's great. If, yeah. Shall yeah. we? Shall we? Absolutely. Is, is it time to watch the Don White show? Absolutely. All right. So, so these are. Got some uh, popcorn in the other room. <laughs> so this is um, again. This is two minutes and forty-four seconds, mm -hmm. and they're just clips from uh, <clears throat> three or four of the shows I've done with Don. Oh yeah. This was the first one, in. Uh, in, two, in the year 2000. By shooting on the six o'clock and news, they fired 15 bullets at one poor dude. He took one on the finger and one on the shin. The other 13 bullets all missed him, so we called him up at the I want to sing along with this. Go ahead, boy. It. <laughs> so, this was shot on the DV cam. And whereabouts is it shot? Yeah, Watertown. In your head, 50 bullets. In your head, oh, what wonderful luck you've got. The guy that tried to kill you was a terrible shot, and it's a great day to not be dead. Shoo -do -up, shoo -up, do -up. This was shot at Jimmy Tingle's Theater in Somerville. Uh, I'm gonna say a lot of things tonight, but the only true thing I'm gonna say is this next thing right here, and I want all my dads out here to pay attention because you're gonna know how funny this is. But it's gonna be so funny and you're gonna want to laugh so hard, but I'm gonna recommend to you that you do not. <laughs> <laughs> I have such distinct memories of all these productions because, oh, yeah. you know, because yeah. you're really... Uh... Well, you're involved in it. I mean, this is, you know, you're, you're not just a bystander. Here's the one truth of this evening. If I have my wife on one side and my daughter on the other side, and they're both talking to me, honest to God, if I close my eyes, I can't tell which one is talking! <laughs> so this was shot in um, Framingham. <clears throat> this is a better quality. This is the song that I wrote after my son went to college and my wife realized that there wasn't going to be any buffer between us anymore. It was a very difficult moment for Mrs. White and she's so happy that I travel around the country uh, sharing it with strangers. Here we go. Rascal is the dog, he ain't too bright Me and Rascal were sitting on the couch last night When my woman come in and she started to cry She looked at us with such terror in her eyes She said, I have raised these children for 18 years While you have done nothing <laughs> So that's it for Don I, 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 um... He's great. He's still a friend of mine today, and, and I do a lot of work with him. I haven't worked with him recently, but, right. but I shot a thing um, with my new cameras, which are 4K uh, uh, mirrorless cameras, yeah, <laughs> and uh, out at the Guthrie Center. So I have this whole concert. But, you know, the, the distribution of it now, nobody's buying DVDs, right. you know? Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, what are we going to do with it? We're not sure what we're going to do with it. But anyway, so the technology in those three clips, the first one was shot on DV cam tape. Okay. And it was digital. Right. But, but DV cam in the back of the, and we thought it was so cool back then. You know, have those, oh, sure. those DV cam camcorders. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, it's not bad, you know. Yeah. And um, four by three, not 16 by nine. And, <laughs> uh, and then editing an early uh, version of Final Cut Pro, maybe the first version of Final Cut Pro, right, right. and um, big advancement. Yeah, and putting that show together, and it, it looked good. Now the second one was shot on HDV, so similar to DV Cam, but it was HD. Right. right. However, at that time, I didn't have the ability to edit HD. Final wow. Cut was not, so I had to, even though the tapes are 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 HD, I had to edit it in standard def. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, although the performance is good and I think, I think the show holds up, oddly enough, that show doesn't look that good to me. Not sure. You know? It's not sharp. It's, not sharp. it's kind of, you know, it's like. Yep. So 
interesting. The technology, the technology drives a lot of stuff. Right, then right. the third one uh, was with a camera that I no longer have, but it was uh, not 4K, but it was it was 1080, uh, shot to an SD card. It was all mm -hmm. digital. It was a Panasonic. I had four, no, three, three Panasonic cameras that all matched, and then I had right. another camera for the audience. You know, mm -hmm. audience shots. Sure. That was a, d a different camera, but but because it was a different angle and everything, and and, and it was okay. It, 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 it added it together. Yeah. And that show, I think that show looks terrific. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with with that show. So uh, again, it's the technology kind of kind of drives where we are. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's setting the meter and how far you can go and what you can get out of it. Right. And always yeah. seem to be the late, like the newest thing. So. You know, yeah. it was like, oh, yeah. how, how does this work? You know, yeah, the and, learning curve starts again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the editing, you know, the editing platform, uh, you know, Final Cut. I work in Premiere as well, but um, you know, everything, you know, keeps rising. And then we look back and go, oh, that stuff, you know. But at the time, it was, it was the highest quality. Yeah, I mean, it was because yeah, was... you're always traveling you're at the highest quality. Yeah, There's, you're not going to within buy a budget. That's within the budget. Within a right, budget, right? And uh, and today, <clears throat> today I have. Um, I have five cameras at home, and um, they're all capable of doing 4K. Mm -hmm. And um, one is an ENG style camera, which okay. is really good for handheld, you know, kind right. of walking around kind sure. of stuff. And two of them are older cameras now, but they still work really well. They're GH Panasonic GH4s, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I bought those a while ago, and uh, they have a four-third sensor. Right, mm -hmm. I don't know if people, you know, this, stuff, but I go over that's it quickly. But, a little over my head, but and, and <laughs> that's um, okay. they make a nice image. Oh yeah, but it's hard to get that shallow depth of field where the background. We're also used to having an interview oh, right. where the face yeah. is sharp, but the background's right. out of focus. Right. With those cameras, I have a lens that will do it, but I have to get pretty far away. Oh, and so 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 then I have uh, now I have two cameras that have full frame sensors. And uh, mm. also Panasonic. I stay with Panasonic, not because I. It's a good. It's it's good. Right. right. Not because it's better than Sony or Canon or anything. But you kind of get mm -hmm. used to. A particular. You get format, used to a yeah. menu format. And you right. get used to the Panasonic way of doing things. Sure. So it's nice to. Yeah. And then you know my. I can make my new S5 mm -hmm. match exactly with my GH4. Right. Now matching exactly with the other the ENG camera. Is a little, it's a little tricky, and uh, but I can handle that in color correction and the and the sure, editing to sure. match them up. Mm -hmm. But uh, so so now I have, uh, and I occasionally will use all five cameras on a shoot. Oh wow! And yeah. um, so so anyway, uh, we get a little a little, uh, a little technical there. Yeah, but um, is there any more music? We I have a f quite yeah, a few. Yeah. Let's see what can we, we got. Can we do another one? Yeah, let's, let's see what, see what we, got. we got. The next one I have here is okay. Well, this is good. Because this was, I did this, I left GBH in 2010, and I shot this in 2009. <coughs> this, is a, this is a group, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, lead into it. Okay. There's a, a man in Cambridge whose name is Bob Childs, and he makes violins. He's a violin maker. Mm -hmm. And he, he realized that there were a whole group of people out there that all played Bob Childs violins. So he put a group together called Child's Play. Great. Bob Child's Play. Yeah. And they all yeah. play Bob Child's um, violin. And then in the group also are a couple of guitars. I don't think he made the guitars and some cellos. And there mm -hmm. are other instruments, that are not, but it's primarily violins. Right. And um, so based on uh, the, the technical success, the, the sure. fact I was able to pull it off doing the Don White three cameras and stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. and edit it at home. Yeah, that's I took on the the task of recording Child's Play performance at Somerville Theater, okay. and uh, but the game the 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 ante got upped quite a bit, oh. and because uh, we thought we were going to get it on the air, which is a whole nother thing, you know. But mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely of a good quality to get th getting things <coughs> broadcast is a whole nother realm. Of, a major, uh, yeah. yeah. So but anyway, sure. so I I had four. Um, Camera. Panasonic cameras, um, and we had a uh, a boom. You know, we we nice. we had a yep. nice little budget. You yep. know, yep. so we put a boom up in the uh, 
in the little those little side balconies. They sure. Had, so, yeah, yeah. and then we had a, a camera at the back of the theater. Okay. I had a camera in the first tier of the balcony, and I was operating a camera like hiding behind the curtains and stuff and getting getting behind shots shot. from yeah. behind. Yeah. So we had oh, four cameras, great. all yeah. HD. I like that perspective. And um, uh, we shot this, and it turned out, in my opinion, terrific. Wow. I was like, yeah. So I I brought this <laughs> this which we'll we'll see here. Okay. Uh, I was really proud of it, and and uh, you know I was like, wow, and it was a lot of work to get it yeah. done and get it get it uh, get it edited and finished and all that. And I brought it to work to show to the guys I worked with, mm -hmm. and uh, I took it to the guys in the studio, and they were like, wow, this is good. I said, Mark, you just put us all out of work. <laughs> so if you could, what was your budget yeah, on that yeah, thing? Yeah, about 185 bucks. <laughs> yeah, uh, was like, you know, a couple thousand yeah, bucks. Couple you know, it was yeah, like right. it was like minuscule. Yeah, you know? sure, sure. And uh, and they, were, of course, we didn't put them out of business. But anyway, so that was. <laughs> but so here's that here's that clip. Sure. There's a couple of uh, this again is another a little over two minutes <clears throat> of uh, of of different clips from uh, Child's Play. I was up in Maine making fiddles with Ivy Mann. We'd often finish a violin and take it down to an old friend of Ivy's named Otto Soper. And Otto had been a traveling musician uh, for many, many years and had many pearls of wisdom. Among them, he, he'd often say that music will take you places that money won't, and you'll make all your great friends through music. It was actually when I got together with Rashad and Keith Murphy. Mm -hmm. um, that we kind of started playing it together and that they just kind of got this really great groove going. Um, and uh, over the chords, I had kind of given them the chords and then they just rocked out on it. You know, uh, Hanukkah, Castle, who's like this incredibly rhythmic player, I mean, that's, and that's kind of like one of the amazing things in her playing is just, you know, how strong and driving her, her, her rhythm is. So I always love playing waiting for the dawn with her because it's just such a powerful <laughs> groove. As I watched this, I remember the stress level that I had in yeah. ta taping this show. So that was child's play, right. wow. yeah, and that was that was great. And it could, wow. You know, that came out wonderful. Yeah, that was that was uh, very happy with with that show, and um, uh, so <laughs> so I was you know I felt like I was you know off and, there. Yeah. Off and running out there. Yeah, you know, and, sure. And um, uh, I left GBH and kind of went out on my own, and I I uh, I, I met uh, a guy who's become a close friend of mine, Jeff Hoffman, out of Marblehead. And he was starting his company, which he called Squash House. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff and I worked together. We did some great, great videos, like we're industrial or corporate, corporate style videos. Sure. And and um, and that's a tough market, you know. Oh, Our, true. We, we he he's a competitive. Why? He's competitive. from Marblehead, but yeah. he went out to California and Vancouver and and mm -hmm. and things. And he was a he was a Hollywood style cameraman. Oh, oh. film, right. you know, thirty five millimeter film. Made the transition to video, so he came back to Marblehead. So it was good. I learned a lot. You always learn. I'm always like, you know, you never stop. You know. That's right. And um, so working with Jeff at that point was was very good, but it wasn't lucrative. Right. <laughs> In yeah, other words, right, right. the bills weren't well, getting paid and stuff yeah, like that. So sure. so um, that's a it's a long drawn as a funny story about uh, I at that point I was sixty. Um, 
five four, something like that, fifth sixty four probably or something. And I'm like, I better, I better. It's a little early, earlier than I had planned, but I better go on Social Security, right? Right. right. So we did that, and then uh, I may have, I may have my my memory of this may be a little, uh, a little uh, not exactly accurate, but but. Um, I got a phone call. Anyway, I'm in my car <laughs> and the old cell phone again. I get a phone call from um, a guy, John, who I used to work with at GBA, WGBH. <laughs> I go, hey, John, that was a surprise. You know, I was like, hey, well, yeah, how you good. doing, John? And he goes, Mark, he goes, what are you doing? I go, oh, I'm retired. He goes, no, you're not. I go, <laughs> I go, what? He goes, he goes, I'm working at Harvard. He goes, uh, we're working a, in a group called Harvard X and, um, uh, would like you to come in here and work with us. You know, we have uh, 13 editors and we have two production teams and we need someone who knows the business to come help us out. And kind of, uh, you know, they were doing okay. They were doing good, you know, yeah, but yeah. to kind of like pull it all together, oversee sure. what was going yeah, on and yeah. stuff. And, and uh, so I went and I worked there for, um, I think, three years, I think. And we did some fabulous fabulous work there so what's harvard you know? what exactly well that they harvard like harvard has <clears throat> without exaggeration hundreds probably over a hundred video production things well this was one of them right oh. so so i had i touched base with them but i only have familiarity with this one right and and it's called harvard x and it was to bring the harvard courses those courses that were taught at harvard mm -hmm. uh, the law school the just Science everywhere, you know, everything. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, everything. government, everything, uh, sure. uh, online to create online courses. So it wasn't just going in the, we didn't do any classroom stuff. It mm -hmm. was all in the studio. We'd go on location and, you know, we did, you know, I went with, I went with um, uh, a professor that taught uh, American government. We took a trip to Washington, D.C. And, um, you know, we went and shot in front of the White House and shot in front of the Capitol and shot in front of the, you know, the, the EPA and the Federal Reserve and the Lincoln Memorial. We had this great, you know, three days in yeah. Washington shooting these stand-ups. It was, it was really Beautiful good. Beautiful city. And then, uh, you know, they said to me, uh, I had only been there a week early, you know, I was mm -hmm. like, and again, it's a learning process. They had different cameras than I was used to. They had Canon c100 which was a beautiful camera mm -hmm. uh but i was unfamiliar with it you know right. i mean it takes a while to learn cameras oh, learn yeah, the different menus oh, yeah. and the cameras yes, and, yes. you know i mean you know it's not just hit record and go you have to yeah. you know so <laughs> so uh they said oh we have a we have a, a gig for you um we're shooting bill clinton you're going to go to new york and shoot bill clinton three cameras and i go oh okay i said well uh, who who are my camera people you know, and they go, "What are you talking about? It's you." And I go, uh, "I don't. I, I'm not comfortable with that." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, they gave me an assistant, oh, right? And helpful. so I went down, two yeah. of us, and um, that's a lot, you know. Anyway, and we got yeah. it done. You know, we got it done. There was a there was one mistake that still kind of uh, still kind of uh, irks me at this point because yeah. it was Bill Clinton. It was high level stuff. Right. Um, uh, the cameras were set up in a thing that I was unfamiliar with called vlog i don't know you know no, yeah. and uh when i br brought it home i was like what brought was back to i was like wow this picture looks terrible i was unfamiliar right. it's a it's a thing it's a technological thing in shooting people shoot to 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 accentuate definition in the black level and oh, also oh, in oh, the white levels oh, okay. and, and right. it essentially it initially it makes the picture look terrible until you work on it yeah. right so anyway anyway but, but <laughs> anyway that's a, another thing and then and then they said oh we're gonna go shoot uh we're gonna go down to dc again and we're gonna shoot um no, that was the first time we're gonna shoot um um john mccain you know so i was like oh great so i went down and i shot nice. john mccain yeah. and and then a, a few things and by so, then you're more familiar with the yeah more familiar at that point and, and, yeah. and more right. comfortable with okay. the thing so so the harvard thing was was really really good you yeah, know, so diverse. And um, uh, but the commute was terrible. I was like an hour and a half each way from Salem to the Cambridge. Harvard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was at least three hours, if not more, in the car every day. And that kind of burned me out after a while. So yeah. yeah. So I left there on, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, good terms and everything. But mm -hmm. um, 
but it was time for me to like take a break and I was uh, I have to you know how old I was I forget <laughs> I was old I was 67 or 66 yeah. or something and, and uh, time to stop commuting you know Yo, yeah so I? when I left Harvard I yeah. said I'm gonna start doing little videos on my own that I want to do you know right right I'm not gonna worry about commercial success or where they're gonna air or we're gonna <laughs> do this or whatever you know I'm just gonna shoot these these videos and I'm gonna sit with basically people I know friends of mine or people who are acquaintances of mine sounds and familiar I've and heard yeah it sounds like songwriters in the round doesn't it <laughs> yes. and um, they're gonna say. talk about their music right and if, oh, they, yeah. if they feel like picking up the guitar right. they can do that sure. but basically the idea is to have a little conversation with them about the music mm -hmm. and then get them to play three songs and then in editing I'll, I'll oh, well, yeah, bring it yeah. all together so and I I came up with the idea to call it Resonance, and I have a mm -hmm. Vimeo page with all my, I don't know how many I have, right now, I have like 15 of them now. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I have them, but it's like, you know, where do you put these things? How do you get them out there to the public? But anyway, I like them. People who see them generally like them. Sure, and sure. I got to meet people who, uh, who I wouldn't who normally have met. Yeah, right. And uh, so let me play a clip from that. Okay. My dad was a musician. My grandfather was a musician. My older brother was a musician. And he's a great guy. Music seemed to be everywhere. Um, what drew me personally to it, what it did for me, uh, is probably something that. I don't know that I could answer it in a in one complete sentence because it's very deep. Deliver me from this mortal grave. And take me away where I'll feel safe. What gives them, gives anyone a unique sound is not particularly the guitar or the amp that they're using. Those are peripheral. Those help push the sound. But the actual tone and sound, the reason why you know it's a certain particular guitar player is by who's playing. Ain't nothing like the sound of a 45 Like a rolling stone in rain 66, 65 I have to remember what key it's in. Uh, that, that's it. There's, there's so many things that, to, to bring it to mind. I might, I might be in the wrong key, but... I mean, this guy's great. This guy is like a, gen is a genius. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, recently I have this friend and she said to me that she's very stressed out. So that caused me to write a song or line. If only we were machines, we could take it. We wouldn't have to feel a thing. That would be it. Only we were machines. We could take it. We wouldn't have to fear. Thing. If only there was no one else. I could make it I wouldn't have to do things The way they do Did 
So that's a, you know, so I have like, I don't know how many of those I have. I have like 15 of them or something. But um, the nice thing about that for me is it's just me. Right. I go, right. My, right. now my nephew yeah. helped me on the, on, a, on, on the third camera there. But, sure. but I just, I go and it's just me. It's all, I don't have to worry about, you know, some producer or somebody else. Right. I'm the producer. Looking I'm the yourself. camera person. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the audio guy for, for a lot of stuff. Yeah. I occasionally have some help on the audio. And, and then I take it home and I edit it and I mix it and no one tells me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you. And uh, I do have friends in the business who I respect their opinion. You know, sure. And sure. like f for those videos early on, I sent them to them, and uh, they were like, "Oh, well, we, we'd like to see, you know, a cutaway. We'd like to see a, a photograph of them or something." And I'm thinking, I understand what you're saying, but you know what? I'm yeah. not doing that. I, I want these to be stripped down, basic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And like in, in the Sal and Sal Baglio's video there, right. the last song he does is um, 45. And um, I just I I just stayed right on that one camera. I didn't go to any you know I didn't I didn't edit it. I didn't do anything. It was just that one camera. Him playing that song for the whole song. And in post, you know, you shoot him 4K. It gives you some right. flexibility. Sure. So I, I had a wider shot, and for the whole song, which is probably I'm not sure how long, but let's say three minutes or something like that. Sure. I did a slow push in. So it's just it's very 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 gradual. gradual. Yeah push in from a wide shot to a medium shot right. and I just I loved it I you know yeah, yeah. I think most people like it but you know if people don't like it that's too bad I mean well, it's, you know, a, it's a it's a style that 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 you use I mean yeah. whenever I mean and that's your art that's that's how yeah. that's why it's different that's why it may seem a little odd but then you realize oh it's not. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's complete and then you and it's relative I guess yeah the, the ideal would be yeah. If somebody looked at a video and said, that's a Mark Steele video. I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I've achieved that. But that would be the ultimate uh, compliment, you know? Sure, um, sure. But then Andy Pratt was, I was on a job. I was on a, uh, a, a, a regular job, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and um, we were at a, a place because we were recording people telling stories on the stage. For, for a company that had that okay. as, as like a right. like a uh, an activity for their but it wasn't stories on from the stage no it was not that it was a, it was <laughs> okay. similar to that it was based right. on that right. kind of it was like a TED talk kind of a thing or something oh, okay. but it was it was for this company for their employees and stuff anyway oh I see and so we're there in this basically this kind of theater place right and this guy walks in and I go hey how you doing he goes hi and he hands me his card he goes hi I'm Andy Pratt. He goes, a uh, 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 rock and roll legend or something like that, right? And I go, okay, thanks. And then that was like, Andy Pratt? I'm like, that was Andy Pratt? I'm like, oh, my God. So, he is a legend. <laughs> so, so when I was done with my gig, I, I was like, he was in the cafe. So I was like, right. Andy, I, saw, I, you know, yeah, yeah. I go, would you like to do a video? He goes, yeah, I'll do a video. So that was the, that's, that's you know. how you got to So, okay, um, no, you know, great. getting to know him was, yeah. was great. It's, it's funny yeah. how things in life happen like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's called random. Yes, it's, it's random. <laughs> it's very random. It is yeah. random, yeah. and maybe it's luck or something like that. <laughs> oh. But if you don't, if you don't get out there and act, if you don't put yourself, you don't participate. Yeah, you don't. You don't put yourself in a place where where random things are going to happen to you, or mm. luck is going to happen. It's not all luck, you know. Right. There's some some randomness to it, but you have to be active and you have to be out and you have to be involved. And, yeah. And because uh, <laughs> if, if you if you didn't take that step to go out of the door, yeah, it's not going to happen. Yep. The yep. whole thing is is to be there. Yep. So let's see what's uh, you know all these things. Oh. So talking about that, yes, right? And yep. back to SATV. SATV uh, seems to be a uh, a focal point for a lot of this. I, my neighbor does a show that he did in Somerville, but he lived, I think, he lived in Somerville or he lived in Cambridge or something. But he did it out of Somerville local access. Right, right. But he lives in Salem now, so now he does it here. Oh, and it's that heavy leather, heavy leather. Rock and roll oh, yeah. show, yes. Ken. I'm I'm familiar with it. I ha I have not seen yeah. it. Yeah. So um, it's a pretty wild show. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty wild show. And uh -huh. he's my neighbor. He lives right across the street from me. Oh. So I was like, Hey, how you doing? And we got talking about this and that. And I said, Well, I could help you. I could help you out with that. 
And um, so we shot these things. We, we shot, he has a section of his larger show is right. called uh, All Sales Vinyl. Right, right. And, which is a very clever title, All Sales Vinyl, but sure. it's Vinyl Records. Yep, yep. And uh, so we went over and Cammy, you know, I don't know if you know Cammy, Cammy Whammy, she was here. And so it was no. Ken and Cammy. Uh -huh. And they did this. So you'll, you'll see. And it, it was like, again, it was like something a little different than I had done. Right. But it was used, I had my cameras and I had my audio recording equipment and the ability to edit. So why not try it? So I went over to his living room and we shot these things. And they're very clever, a lot of fun. I've seen this. You've seen everything, Ken. Ooh, what's this one? Oh, you want to check it out? Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome, this is a great one. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of All Sales Vinyl, where we show you the hottest new vinyl releases. I got a really cool one to show you this week. It's the latest edition of the Brown Acid series. This is the eighth trip. You know the history of Brown Acid at Woodstock? Absolutely. <laughs> Check this one out, and all of the uh, previous volumes, they're all on Riding Easy Records. And while we're here, Cammy, let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back let's do to, it. to uh, 1971 with this track from the second trip of Brown Acid. Here's Midnight Witch from Ash on the Heavy Leather Music Video Show. That's my neighbor, Ken, and my friend, Cammy. <laughs> and uh, so they do that show. And anyway, so that was... Fun, yeah, and I, yeah, I, sure. I really like the, uh, you know, the fact that it looks good, sounds good, yes, it does, yep. and it's a fun little thing to do, and it's here, right here, it's right here on SATV. Yeah. So you want to do things at SATV? Why don't we get into that? What I'd like to do for the course, right, is uh, mm -hmm. I'll cover things like pre-production, like what do you have to do? I mean, that's kind of the dry part of the. Part, but, uh, yeah, but if you do yeah. it correctly, it's not so dry. It's actually and fun. And it saves time later on oh, if you it's do it right. It's a total yeah. necessary Absolutely. step. Yep. And then I want to talk about the camera. I want to right. talk about the different cameras that are out there, all the way from the iPhone mm -hmm. to a high-end uh, camera. The different lenses, you know, right. Zoom, right. zoom lenses, prime lenses. How to use those. Um, and, yeah. You know, what, what lens is right for, for which situation. We'll go over audio, you know, my different microphones, uh, um, lavaliers, okay. shotguns, you know, right. uh, uh, you know, Neumann mics for recording music, stuff like, you know, we have condenser here. mics, dynamic yeah. mics, all that kind of stuff. And then lighting. Right. Lighting is the thing that came to me in my career later on. I never, right. never did lighting. Lighting is pretty tricky to get, tr uh, you get good lighting. So we got the pre-pro, we got the cameras, we got the audio, we got the lighting, and then we have editing. Now, I, I'm assuming that people are going to have some basic kind of idea about editing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I'll help them a little bit with the editing and talk mm -hmm. about editing mm -hmm. techniques. And mm -hmm. we'll have a little lighting seminar, audio seminar, uh, you mm -hmm. know, camera, mm -hmm. pre-pro editing. What I would like people to do is to shoot stuff. I want people to bring stuff in, right. and we'll all sit around and, and we'll look at what you've done. So, so we'll get all those aspects of it together, like okay. the starting date and all that stuff. And okay. but, uh, but um, so I'm looking forward to that. It'd be fun for me to do that. I, I, uh, I think it'd be well. I, I think it's an opportunity that people who are interested in doing it to begin with to have you be involved in it. Um, that's got to be an appreciation factor that should work. Really well. Well, that's nice of you to say. I mean, I, that's, that's, well, that's good. I've seen your work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's and fine. I, I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm enthusiastic yeah, about yeah. it. I think, you know, yeah. and, and uh, I do have, you know, 40 years in the business. So, so. Uh, okay. So. so let me thank you. You bet. So much for being here and bringing your, your life and your, and your work uh, to, our, to my audience. 
Sure, well, you're Thursday. welcome. I'm happy to do it. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll be involved in what Mark is going to be doing here at SATV. And until next time, I'm Ken Weaver for Foresight. Thank <laughs> you.